So welcome. This is Milan, who is a former Hereford Sick Form College student. And Milan, introduce yourself. Where did you go to secondary school? What did you do at Hereford Sick Form College? Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Milan. I went to Pershaw High School. And when I joined the college, I studied A-level, uh, A-levels in modern history, politics, English literature and maths. And uh, I'm currently now at Durham doing law. That's So you did four. I'd forgotten that. My goodness, yeah. <laughs> must have kept you so busy. <laughs> it, was, it was quite a busy couple of years, yeah, but I enjoyed them. <laughs> and how did you find balancing all four? With- I mean, I, I enjoyed both years. First year, I wouldn't say was always plain sailing. I think with different A-levels, you have different moments where you, you reach like a certain point where you feel like you're stuck. You know, you're not getting the grades you want to, gra- to get eventually. I remember with English literature in first year, I wasn't the happiest with my grades to begin with. but you know, that turns around after some time. Um, balancing it was okay, I think. It is it is just about being organised. I think that's it, really. Um, and that's a skill that takes a while to learn. But I think the teachers were there to almost help you out with that. They understood that there's other A-levels happening at the same time. So, so you did three arts subjects, kind of English, history and politics, and then maths. Why maths? I mean, I enjoyed maths at GCSE. And I didn't really want to let it go uh, going into sixth form. I thought that it would be nice to have a different A-level that wasn't essay-based artsy. And I think I'm I'm happy that I chose it because maths was quite a welcome break, I think, um, doing my A-levels. It was nice to kind of have a different type of, of subject where you do different things. It's much more black and white, concrete, but you still learn problem solving, which I think is applicable in any kind of discipline or, or subject. Did you know about universities? Tell me about what about your parents' situation? So did they know about the university application process in the UK, anything like that? Um, we weren't too familiar, no. So my parents went to uni, but uh, not in the UK. I wasn't super familiar. I knew that I knew of like the the key universities, the top ones. But it really was at, at sixth form where I started to learn more about the application process, personal statements, all of that. Uh, for example, Durham. I hadn't even heard of Durham really until until learning about all of that at, at sixth form. So yeah, I was quite unfamiliar to begin with. And so you chose law. How did you come to pick law because you weren't doing it for A-level? What were your thoughts surrounding that? To be honest with you, I even in secondary school, I always thought that law would be quite a good option for me. I knew that it it used a lot of the skills from subjects that I enjoyed doing already, like history, English. And I always found the law itself to be quite an interesting area of, you know, political science, if, if that's how you'd call it. I, I think I really confirmed though that I wanted to do law in sick form. It was more just an idea before that. And that was because, you know, when you're applying to university, you're looking at these courses in a lot more depth. You're looking at the modules they offer. And there were a lot of modules which really kind of stuck out as sounding quite interesting. And I thought, yeah, law is definitely the way to go. Do you remember what modules they were? It was mostly the public law modules. So ones to do with constitutional law, administrative law. So looking at how individuals can challenge government decisions, because I I really did enjoy that kind of area of politics because we studied that a little bit A-level. And I knew that I'd enjoy looking at that in more depth. So I thought, yeah, no, this is the way to go. Law is the way to go. (laughs) Very cool. So you had to do an LMAT, did you, for Durham? Yes, for Durham and for Bristol as well. And how did you find that? It was difficult. I won't lie. It's probably one of the trickiest exams I've done, only because it's it's not really a knowledge test. You can't really prepare for something like this by just reading a textbook or reading a manual on it. It's very much testing your you know, your verbal reasoning skills, your critical thinking skills. And you've probably, if you're familiar with like how the LNAT works, you, you'll have heard that the average is about 50%, the average grade. So it is really just a matter of doing loads and loads of practice tests and hoping that you kind of reach that 50% uh, threshold. But I found that the more practice tests I did, the more I got used to the types of questions it asks and uh, the less mistakes I was making. But yeah, it was tricky, definitely. <laughs> Definitely. So let's talk about Durham then. How are you finding university? Tell us a little bit about your modules, uni life, that kind of thing. I really enjoy university life. I have to say that it's in terms of the academic side of things, it wasn't that big of a of a jump from from sixth form. And I think that's that's mostly to do with how kind of college college life was. You get a lot of free time at university, especially like in law, you don't get many contact hours. So it really is a matter of 
you know, doing independent studying as much as you can. And I quite enjoy that aspect of it. I like the independence. Mm. Um, university life is quite good at Durham too. We're quite well known for societies. There's so many. Um, so that's been quite fun uh, getting involved with. And the course itself, I think at Durham is interesting. I've done quite a few modules because I've just finished my second year now, but a whole range, you know, we've looked at, as I mentioned earlier, the public law modules. We've also looked at a bit more, some people would call them drier modules, looking at contracts, commercial law, things like that, which surprisingly also quite interesting. I didn't think I'd enjoy them that much. And I've also looked at more political or philosophy based modules. So this year I did legal philosophy, which was probably my favorite module. Cool. And it didn't feel like my other modules. It was very different, but I quite like that that um, range. That, that sounds yeah. really fascinating because it does give you such a breadth. And then tell us a little bit about your summers. So you're going into your second summer. What did you do last summer? What did you what are you up to this summer? Last summer, I I, I did work. I had a job. It wasn't really law related. It was um, a customer service job at a small company. I really enjoyed it, you know, although perhaps it wasn't related to what I want to do in the future. It, I felt like it still gave me some good, you know, communication skills, definitely. This summer, though, I've got an internship uh, at the law school at Durham. It's like a research based internship. So I'm looking specifically at constitutional law and looking at uh, constitutional principles, how the government has treated those principles, specifically in the context of the Rwanda um, judgment, the Rwanda policy which uh, I say now that that's kind of defunct with the new general election and all of that. But yeah, no, um, that's still going now, that internship. That sounds really cool. And how did you apply for that or hear about that? That was um, kind of communicated within uh, the university. So I got the email and I thought, (laughs) why not give it a go? Did you have to go through interviews and things? Yes. So the interview was actually very much like Oxbridge type interviews. They kind of just gave you a case to read in advance. They just asked you questions on that case. Um, So yeah, there was that kind of element to applying, but yeah, it was enjoyable. (laughs) That is really really cool. And so ideas wise, you've got another year of uni and then what are you kind of thinking you might go into after? Is there a particular area or are you thinking something quite broad? Currently, I'm not 100% sure. I definitely know that I want to stay at uni and and do a master's. I really enjoy property law. uh, So I'm thinking to, to, to tailor that masters to property law ultimately though i would i would love to be a barrister so that that's kind of the end goal how how i'll get there i'm not too sure yet i know that with the bar it's very common to to take some time after university do something else and then apply eventually so that's probably what i'll do but currently straight after uni i'm hoping to do a masters that sounds amazing it sounds like you're having a fantastic time and balancing everything and if you were to look back on your former self What would you say about those worries, about the kind of first year, about end of year results? What would your hints and tips for your former self be? I would say that, and this applies to even way before university GCSEs, A-levels, that we're definitely our harshest critics and that, you know, a lot of the time after an exam, you're going to feel like you've you've completely, you know, messed it up or you've ruined it. And there's always, there's always a a surprise element to that. So it's, it's almost to just treat an exam as something that comes and goes and move on. And I think in first year, especially, you know, the whole idea of imposter syndrome, it's quite common. It's hopefully because you have a passion for your subject. So, you know, there's no need to dwell on that feeling of, oh, I'm I'm not going to be able to get to where I want to be. I'd say that to just kind of try disregard those feelings as much as possible, because the results will hopefully be be worth it. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's the thing is when I first knew you, you definitely didn't I think you lacked a little bit of self-belief and actually even though I was quite blunt and I am I you know when you had me for English um, and actually I think that kind of bluntness is a bit of a shock but actually it's all about the journey um, and you were absolutely amazing it was just trusting the process. Absolutely and it's the same at uni Um, you'll find that feedback you get on your essays or in tutorials lectures whatever it will be blunt but that that that's a good thing you know you should treasure that feedback and and it'll get you to to a good place fantastic well Melan, it has been so lovely to chat to you and we'll have to catch up with you in a couple of years and see how the masters has gone as well thank you i'd love to (laughs) thank you nice to see you